Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about how to put inputs and outputs in parallel. And we're going to talk about the positives and the negatives of doing so. So, the first thing we want to do is after we've created our program, we're ready to go, RS Links is finished up, our controller properties is taken care of, and our I.O. configuration is done, we want to come over, we want to grab an input, drag it down, Oop, nothing happened. Why? Because I didn't insert a new rung. So I come up here, select new rung, then I can click here, and I'm going to go ahead and use that middle green and uh, push button that we talked about in the previous video. Here. Okay, middle green push button pops up. Then I'm going to throw my output out here. I'm going to use the green the, the green pilot light again. All right. Now it's time to actually put something in parallel. And to do that, what we want to do is we want to select the device or the input that we actually want to put the parallel rung branch around. So I want to do this first for my input. Okay. So I come up here to uh, my rung branch icon and I click it. Now you don't drag this down in my personal opinion. I like to click it and then it pops up over here and people get confused about this and oh what am I supposed to do when they're first getting started. What you do is you grab the red highlighted part of the rung branch and you drag it over until you see the green here. It's very important if you don't see green it's not gonna, nothing's going to happen. So I'm going to grab it and you can see that it shows me the two different places that I could put it in this rung. Oops. So come over here, select this. Now I have my parallel rung branch. So in this case what I want to do, if I click right now on the examine if closed instruction, this actually gets put over here. I don't want it here, I want it in parallel. So I can either move it or I can select control Z to undo what I just did. But I'll click it one more time and I want to drag it over here. So what I want to do is don't click on the question mark or the input address. What we want to do is we want to click on the center of the instruction and then drag it over and then look at all the different places that I can put it. Every place that it turns green I can place my instruction but we want to put it in parallel so we'll put it right down here. We're going to go ahead and type in the uh, input address. I semicolon if you remember from the last video 13 oops sorry a slot 0 forward slash 13 hit enter now this has the name of PB from the uh, last program that I had so what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and double click on here and I'm going to change this to right green push button select OK and there we go now we have our parallel branch we have I can either activate this green pilot light by using the middle green push button or the right green push button so what I want to do now is I want to put an output in parallel now this is something in my class that I don't encourage students to do very often um, the only time I encourage outputs to be put in parallel is when it's a pilot light that is from on a control panel that is meant to be activated only when the output um, that it represents is activated. That's the only time I ever do it. But I want to show you guys how to do it because it's an important skill to know. So I select the output, I right click and then it pops this over here. It pops my rung branch over here. I want to grab it, drag it over just like I did on my input and it moves it back to the right. Obviously your outputs are always on the right. Now I'm going to bring down another output here. Okay. Now let's say that I want to do the red light. Okay, so I want to have the red light and the green light on at the same time, which was what this program will do. What I can do here is, if I don't want to type in the full address here, I can actually drag this output address right down to here, click on the bottom, and change it to two, which was my, oops, red pilot light. Select OK and there we go. Now we have a green, our, our two uh, green push buttons in parallel and we have our green and our red light in parallel. And if I were to download this now I could activate either push button and get that and activate both of these outputs. But before I do that I want to show you how to put a third input 
in parallel. And there's a couple of tricks to this, so I want to make sure that we uh, that we don't do a way that will kind of annoy your employer later. So let's say I wanted to put a branch around here. I highlight this. I highlight my bottom input. I select my rung branch again. Comes over here drag it over here. Now what I end up getting is an upside down wedding cake. And if you start putting a lot of inputs, if there's a lot of logic to turn on your output, you're going to end up with this gigantic huge upside down wedding cake. And it's just going to keep expanding and expanding and expanding. It's going to be a big mess. So in my classroom, I do not allow students to do this. Okay, Upside down wedding cakes are an absolute no-no. So I come here, I hit Control Z a couple of times, and I start deleting some of the things that I did. When I want my students to put more than three things in parallel, this is how they have to do it. They come over here to the right, the right side of your rung branch, and you right click. An option menu comes up, gives you a certain number of things, cut, copy, delete, okay? But what we want to do here is we want to extend branch down. And when I do that, I get a very smooth looking, very nice looking par three rung parallel branch. So then I come in here, select my input. I'll drop this one down here. You see how I grab, I grab the input address, not the input itself, the input address, come here. And I'm going to change this to nine, which was my yellow push button. Oops. Select OK. So now I'm going to be ready to download this. So I go to my offline here, select download. Do I want to put a revision in here? In this case, no, I don't. If I wanted to, I could put creating parallel branches, but at this point, I think we're fine. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to go through all the same steps that I went through before, basically just selecting yes whenever it comes up. Hit yes here. Do you want to go online? Yes. Now, what I want to do here is I'm going to start to activate my inputs and you're going to be able to see how they are operating. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select my middle green. Both my lights came on. You can see it both on the computer screen and on my control panel. I activate my right green push button. My lights come on and I hit my yellow and both my lights come on. So basically I can activate this machine from either here, here, or here. Now these two, these three push buttons are obviously located in very close proximity on my control panel, but in a factory, these three push buttons can be located hundreds of feet, hundred of feet, hundreds of feet apart, and this allows you to be able to turn those lights on in a couple of different locations. Now that we know our program works, let me show you how I personally prefer to put all of my outputs on a, um, in a RS Logics 5000 program. So I'm going to go offline here, and this is how I do. I only, I only personally like to have outputs, a single output on every single rung. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add a rung, okay, new rung, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the entire output and move it down to my rung one. So I'm going to take my red pilot light, I'm going to grab it. Now don't grab the address if you're trying to move the whole thing. I'm going to grab this here, drag it down, drop it right there. I'm going to delete, I click on the corner here, I'm going to delete that parallel branch. Then what I'm going to do is add a new input in here. Now this input is going to be a contact off of the green pilot light. So watch how I do this. I click on the address and drag the name down and you can see that the name, the, the address is actually coming with me. Wait till this turns green, drop it down. Now this has the same light as this. So this acts as a contact off of this output. So whenever this is true, this will t turn true and then of course turn my red pilot light on. Now this is the exact same program. It's going to act exactly like the previous program, but the subtle difference here is is that if later on I want to change the logic here where my pilot light maybe comes on in a different circumstance, this is super important to be able to do because you don't want to start messing with a lot of um, 
uh, inputs and outputs that are control outputs that are controlled by different inputs in the same room. It just becomes a mess to troubleshoot and a mess to program. So I'm going to download this, and you're going to see that this this act this is activated the exact same way, and everything operates exactly the same. So I push the middle green button, both lights turn on. I push the uh, right green button, turns on, and I hit the yellow. They both all three both of them turn on so these programs act exactly the same the subtle difference is is if this complex if this program becomes more complex it's going to be a much easier to modify this program than it is the other one